Last weekend, uh, I had a toolbox to mend, which is my plumbing box, here, which is absolute garbage, but it would be because it's from B&Q, and any toolbox from B&Q is crap. So I've had it a couple of years, but I haven't used it very much. The hinge is smashed there, that bit's smashed, that bit's crap, so it's had a bit of glue put in it. Um, but the, uh, the big problem was this little uh, toolbox within a toolbox because it was all cracked around here and at that end. Uh, I do believe I walked past it and coughed and it broke it. It's made out of absolute crap plastic which does nothing but, but break. It's not fit for purpose. So uh, I used a piece of plastic milk bottle. Milk, uh, one of these costs, I believe, about one pound ten for um, that that four pint bottle with the milk. And I swear it's indestructible. You can't break it. Now, if I took this little tack hammer and did that to that, it would smash it. To the point of, of worthlessness. So what's that all about? Anyway, that's another story. So I empty the contents, which are currently there, of this little tray, and in there I found a piece of black 10mm steel bar, and I looked at it and thought, what's that? It wasn't this bit, it was a bit similar. Um, and it had a groove nicked in the top, and I looked at it and thought, what on earth is that? And eventually I remembered, and I thought, ah, I've wanted that for a while. Because what it was, was a homemade tool, which I'd made, for taking the, uh, the atomising nozzle out of what I originally thought, immediately thought, was the Primus stove, which is there, which I use um, not so often nowadays, but usually for heat, heating up the soldering iron, if I need to use the soldering iron, or that type of soldering iron. So anyway, here's the piece of metal, round but round 10 mil bar, uh, which I've shone up and sprayed with varnish because I like messing about like that, and I put primus on it, so that in another five or ten years' time, when I'm even more older and more senile, I look at it, I will remember what it was for. But it wasn't actually for the primus, although it does fit the primus. That little that little nozzle in there, look, it does fit that. But the real reason was for the old paraffin blow lamp which I've had f had since I first started out so probably bought this when I was 20 odd years old from um, an antique shop or something like that but not not to display as an antique but to use so um, it, it was the fact that it was so long that made me realize it wasn't for the primus and it's so that it fits down here and you can you can access the uh, the little nozzle in there using that notch that I cut in the end. So all you do is obviously put it in there until it catches onto the nipple, twist. Oh, I thought that would be do, done up finger tight, but I can't get it. One of the advantages of having a little that little flat side is you can get the spanner on it. So back on. Let's see if we didn't need a lot of cracking. Unscrew it. And out it comes. There it is, it's just got um, parallel sides so that you can get the uh, get the tool onto it. And it's got a fine nozzle up the middle. And what you normally do is when you light these things, you use the primus pricker. This little thing. And while it's still in there, you just um, press that. Push that little spike into the uh, into the nozzle hole, 
and it clears out any little bits of blockage that are, that happen that, that occur inside. And it's usually a piece of uh, a flaky carbon. And quite often, when you take one of these out, you can tap it like that, and there's nothing more satisfying than getting a lump of uh, carbon out. Because quite often, all you're doing when you when you uh, use the Primus pricker is pushing it back in, and eventually it works its way back and blocks the nozzle again. So every now and again, it's a good idea to take it out and bang it. But I've already done this because um, I did it last weekend when I uh, after I found the tool. So I just wanted to show how easy it is uh, to make one of these tools. Maybe not quite so easy to get it back in. Could do with this being magnetic actually. So I'm just going to put it back in and then light it, just for posterity. Oh, well, that went in easy enough. I'm going to do that. Well, I was going to say, I'm going to do it finger tight, but I'll do it a little bit tighter than finger tight, but not too tight. They make a good seal anyway. So when you light it, what you do is get your methylated spirit, which you don't see much of nowadays. Put it in the little reservoir. And light. And this uh, it's at this stage that you tend to normally use the Primus pricker. Because what you do is, you leave that little valve slackened back until all the meth has burnt down. Um, and then as soon as it's burnt almost to nothing, you tighten that up and then pump. Um, because if you don't, if you, if you leave that cracked, if you, to, if you to put the meth in the light and leave that cracked forward, which is fully sealed, it tends to cause pressure inside the barrel and put and force uh, paraffin out prematurely so you leave that crack so there's no pressure built up wait until the mess burns down in the reservoir almost to nothing so yeah at this point you'll often need the primus pricker because what you do is you tighten the uh, tighten the little valve up here it, here it goes up what the mess is doing is heating up this um, this maze of pipes inside there, um, which heats the paraffin up inside it, which helps it, helps it to atomize. That's the that's the purpose of the meths. So um, you'll crack in that valve up, you'll pump it, you'll get a bit of flame going, but it'll be intermittent because you've got blockage. So you quickly press the uh, Primus pricker spike into there just to release any uh, stray bits of carbon that have blocked you up. Hopefully this time, because I've cleaned it out, it won't happen. Come on, watch kettle never boils. By the way, the glue, the glue that I used for this This stupid, useless tray out of the uh, <coughs> B&Q toolbox was this stuff. If you see some of that for sale anywhere, get some. It's fantastic stuff. It says for metal, but it glues plastic a treat. A bit stiff to get out when you press those two uh, those two barrels. But so here we go. Mess is starting to boil. Actually, I don't think there's so much paraffin in there. Paraffin. I bought a gallon from wherever. Thorsby Home Care. £7.50 for a gallon of paraffin. How many of you 60-year-olds out there can remember how much paraffin was in 1975 when your mum sent you for it? Well, about 40p. One and six, probably. No, 
know, decimalisation was 71, so it would have been 15p or something. Come on. Here we go. Tighten that up. The mess is dying, look. Before it dies, give it a bump. But it's died, so we can't use the mess to light it, so we'll just use the lighter. I'll just give it a second to warm itself up a bit more before I pump it any further and before I use the uh, Primus pricker because it looks like it might need it. Because what's happening is the flame, instead of coming out of the nozzle, is coming out of the sides, which suggests that the uh, that the jet of uh, atomized petrol uh, paraffin coming through there isn't quite right. So, right, a few more pumps. Now that's definitely a sign that it's not coming out right. So this is when you get the pricker in the nozzle. There we go. a short while the um, end of the nozzle turns a dim red and that's when you know you're kind of up to temperature when you can start to use it but I sometimes use some of these blow lamps have a little cradle on the top for putting the uh, soldering iron on like that And I've often used the blow lamp for doing that. But anyway, it's a great tool. And I've been using it for years. But I've got to confess that, although I love it, I, it doesn't get quite as hot as the uh, modern butane and propane mix. For all that it makes a row, and it sounds quite impressive, it doesn't get as hot as this thing, which is uh, propane and butane mix. Propane being the one that burns hottest. I should say propane burns quite a lot more uh, hotter than paraffin. turn it off all you do is just crack the valve let the pressure off and it dies but it's a lovely thing I really like it I also like the Primus so I'll have a little play about with that on the next video although this actually isn't a Primus it's a surveyor another Swedish manufacturer but it's Primus look like but anyway there's my little uh, fettel clean out and lighting of, of my lovely old paraffin blow lamp <laughs>